But these... <laughs> what are you doing? I'm gonna have to redo it. Don't do that. I'm giving you an outtake. <laughs> You're so proud of your outtake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so our raised beds are... <clears throat> So our raised beds are mole proof. We have hardware cloth on the bottom of them. But Wendy's in-ground garden is definitely, it's, what are you doing? Over here. Don't do that. Why? You're distracting me. You're waving in the gophers. You're waving them in. As I've been filling up some of these beds, Wendy has been right behind me planting her early plants in them. I'll try to come back a little later and give you a closer look. On nice days like this, Wendy's brought out her seedlings to get a little sunshine. It's good to harden them off a little bit, get them used to being outside before we have to plant them outside and shock their system. Tarp unfolding and placement. <laughs> Wonder how they managed to do it by themselves before they watched this video. Right? Do you think that? 
that would make it hotter. Brown would make it hotter on the outside. Huh? Brown up would be hotter. Than the gray? Yeah. So the garden is in transition right now. We've got some of our beds planted already. Others are also covered with this cloth. That's to protect the, the plants that we've got in there from predators and also to keep it a little bit warmer because it's still a little bit cold out here for some of these plants. Let me see if I can give you a little peek underneath that cloth. Hopefully you could see a little bit in there. I still have this bed to top off with compost. We've got some of these beds covered with tarps. The purpose of that is to simply keep weeds from growing. It'll just make things a little bit easier. Why let the weeds get a head start on us? So Wendy has been a little annoyed with our pea plants along the back trellis here. Something has been digging them up. She put out our trail camera to try and capture exactly what's going on. We see a lot of squirrels out here, so that was kind of our first thought, but it turned out it was actually the birds that were uh, digging up the peas. Here's another look inside another one of those cloth covered beds. This reflective tape is supposed to keep the birds away. Supposedly the flashing light as it moves around a little bit is supposed to scare them away. Hopefully it works. Spring is a lot of work, but I'm glad that it's turning into spring. It's good to be outside. Well, I've finished using all of last year's compost. Finally used all of last year's compost and it feels really good to be done with that project. I really stepped up my efforts last year. I used all of my neighbor Randy's grass clippings and I definitely needed that fifth compost bin that I built last year. I'll probably need to build even more compost bins this year. This was actually the first year that I was able to top off all of the raised beds that we have. I didn't top off this one raised bed. This is an experiment of Wendy's. Earlier in the year, she put in a bunch of goat poop and then covered it with some wood chips. We'll see how it compares with the other raised beds. Normally, wood chips which are really high in carbon would rob the nitrogen right out of the soil. But because they're not very deep, 
and they're only on the surface, it should just be fine. We have had more worms this year in our compost than ever before. I don't know if it was just a good year for worms or if new compost bins just take a few years for them to really attract the worms. One lesson learned for me this year is to use thinner layers of leaves between the grass clippings and other green material. I found more undecomposed leaves than I would have liked in our compost. And last year I ran out of leaves to layer in with the green material before I ran out of the green material to be composting with. Another lesson learned is not to leave bags of hazelnut shells out for squirrels to play in. Slugs have been a real problem for our garden and these broken shells with their sharp edges are supposed to be a nice natural way to deter them. Slugs soft bodies will get cut up trying to crawl over them as they're trying to get to our plants. I had enough compost after filling the raised beds to start work on our new in-ground garden. There's quite a bit more square footage out here, so we're still going to have to use quite a bit of store-bought compost. As a rule of thumb for how much compost you should make, our default has always been just as much as we can possibly make. That's especially important when you're expanding your garden area. You gotta get a little closer to the camera. But the tree is you, in my way. You're really small in the frame. That's better. That's better. Somewhere Can around you there. See my bucket? Yep. Okay. So Brian wanted me to explain about the garden beds and kind of how they're constructed. You can maybe tell a little bit of what YouTube videos I'm watching by uh, kind of the stuff I start doing around here because I get very inspired by videos and things that I'm watching that are related to the types of things that I want to do. And so I've been watching a lot of Charles Dowding and he lives in the UK, which is quite similar, I think, to our climate here in the Pacific Northwest. And so he has a lot of the same problems in his gardens that I have, which include slugs and snails and things like that. And so I started kind of looking into more his no-dig method and how he creates garden beds and that he's not actually using raised beds anymore. He's mostly just putting things in the ground and kind of covering things up, but not using um, mulches like a lot of people do, which is interesting to me because I've had lots of problems with mulches being sort of a vehicle for slugs <laughs> to get into everything. So what we've been doing is Brian had a little bit of his compost left and so we used some of that in the first two beds and half of this bed. But the way they were constructed is I took this five gallon bucket and I went to our giant wood chip pile and I filled it up bucket by bucket and I created a little wood frame around the bed and then I would kind of stack around that frame with the wood chips and then we would fill the frame up with the compost or the garden bed soil that we got from the store. So right now we have six six of them finished and then I have a seventh one that's set up that I'll have Brian kind of show you in a minute 
where it's set up the way we will fill it. And then I've got a little section behind us here that is still yet to be kind of mapped out and figured out. And then obviously we'll have where the wood chip pile is as well to create more garden space. And then as I'm kind of creating them, I'm figuring out where I want my edges to be a little bit. And some of that will be a little more path and some of that will be filled in with some of the extra dirt to help make us have places for, we're gonna have artichokes and zinnias and flowers along the edges. And so hopefully that will make the garden look pretty. And um, especially over here in this corner where the the big poop pile is under the quail. <laughs> I kind of like to have like a zinnia border back here so that we can kind of see flowers there instead of a big pile of poop. <laughs> so hopefully that helps to explain kind of what we're doing. I have no idea if this will work or if this is a good idea for where I'm growing, but I we are experimenting. So hopefully it works. This is a little bit more sun in this area than our other beds. So I'm hopeful that it will be good for us because we do suffer from a lack of sun in our property. Okay. Go stand in the middle of your raised bed there so we can get a sense of scale. All right. But these... <laughs> what are you doing? I'm going to have to redo it. Don't do that. I'm giving you an outtake. <laughs> You're so proud of your outtakes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so our raised beds are... <clears throat> so our raised beds are mole proof. We have hardware cloth on the bottom of them. But Wendy's in-ground garden is definitely... It's, what are you doing? <laughs> Over here. Don't do that. Why? You're distracting me. <laughs> You're waving in the gophers. You're waving them I'm in. I'm telling them to go over there where the cows are. Okay. <laughs> so, our raised beds are mo... <clears throat> blah, blah. Our raised beds are mold proof. We have hardware cloth on the bottom of them. But Wendy's in-ground garden is going to be very susceptible to being attacked by moles. So she found some sort of a... Sonic. It's a sonic device that's supposed to repel the moles. We'll see if it works. Right now I'm a little skeptical because it's just going to sound like a big truck is backing up on our driveway <laughs> the whole time. Hopefully it's not as noticeable once we get these things in the ground. <laughs> All right. <Deep. laughs> I'm just going to use the T-post here to create a little hole so hopefully we can pound those things in a little easier. Use your feet on the thing. the plastic. What do you think? All right, let's try the other one. It's not so loud. We've got two of them. 
one for each opposing corner. Like I said, we'll see if it works. <laughs> he is significantly quieter. Farther in there. Okay. Don't break it. Right.